Hi folks, Redface here today. We are going to be looking at a Colink 80 plus power supply. Now I have some very simple rules when it comes to putting power supplies in systems. Generally, avoid the cheap ones and always make sure they're 80 plus. Now with this one, I've definitely made sure it's 80 plus, but this is a brand name I'm not familiar with. But I'm going to give it a go because cheap ones don't often come with that. But it has to be said, 80 plus is getting more and more affordable. And often, power supplies are only made by a small number of manufacturers anyway. Not too sure who makes Colink. If you know that, please leave that in the comments. But I'm pretty sure there's probably a name manufacturer using exactly the same company. So we're going to have a look at this one today. This is the 500 watt version. This should be an adequate power supply for a basic system and that's what this is going to go in whether i'd use it for a gaming system i'm not too sure i probably wouldn't take the risk on a name that i don't know having said that 500 watts would power a reasonable graphics card but it's going to go in a basic system it's 80 plus we're going to get near 500 watts at least that's what i would hope now the first thing i notice about this is it's quite heavy cheap power supplies are often quite light this has got a bit of weight to it and so that usually is an indication that there's some quality components in there. The box itself, it's just a plain brown box, so not a lot of money spent on packaging, but that's absolutely fine. Some specs on the back, 80 plus APFC high efficiency, minimum 85% efficiency, 50% load, 82% efficiency at a load of 20% and 100%. Essentially, that is the 80 plus criteria. It has multi-protection, OVP, UVP, SCP and OPP. Supports PCI Express 6 plus 2 pin. Um, just one times on the 300 watt, 400 watt and 500 watt uh, power supplies. But two of them on the 600 watt and 700 watt versions. And a two year warranty. Which is not bad to be honest with you. So, I'm opening it up. I'm going to see what we actually get with this power supply. Obviously... The power supply itself, not much else. We do get a bag with a couple of cable ties in it and some black screws, which is not bad to be honest with you. Cheap power supplies often emit those, you don't get anything at all. There is no power cable, but that's fine, I've got loads of those. Now cables are not sleeved, they are plain. Again, for a basic system that's probably all right. If you pay a bit more money, you'll probably get sleeved cables. Again, that's becoming almost a standard feature. So you can see where the money is being saved, possibly on things you don't really need. Now, I notice here that we do have two, I think, no, one, as it says, one PCIe slot there. And of course, that's your 8-pin motherboard slot. And these are coloured green and red. Your 24-pin power connector. And in terms of connectors themselves, it's all SATA power cables, I think. No, again, I'm wrong. On this cable we've got two SATA, one Molex, and same with that one. So you've got four SATA and two Molex. Always handy, there's always stuff in your machine that still uses the old Molex connectors. Um, so it's good to have. Okay, we're going to unwrap the bubble wrap here. Again, at least it's wrapped in bubble wrap. That could have been something that uh, they wanted to save some money on. Okay. Right, okay, now now it's out of the box. It's not the heaviest power supply, I will admit that I've come across, but it's not the lightest either. Um, that's not a bad grill on the top, and there's a good and nice thick 120 millimeter fan in there. Again, I like to go with the power supplies with 120 mil fans on the bottom rather than the 80 mil fans on the back. To be fair, you don't get many 80 mil fans on power supplies these days. Simple sticker on the side giving us the power ratings and it does reckon it will do 396 watts maximum power on the 12 volt rail and 33 amps now that's not bad it's always worthwhile checking what it'll do on a 12 volt rail uh, 15 amps on the 5 volt rail and 18 amps on the 3.3 volt rail a maximum um, across those of 100 watts um, 400 watts continuous power 500 watts rated max output so really, I would say, for stable operation, you want to be putting this in a system that doesn't want to draw more than about 400 watts. 
So again, a standard system with no more than a couple of hard drives in, um, a simple graphics card, ideally one that's powered off the PCIe slot anyway. If it isn't, as long as it's not got too much of a power draw, you should be okay. But as soon as you start overloading a load of stuff, putting a lot of extra peripherals in or a beefy graphics card, then you're not going to go for something like this. That's not what we bought it for. Just so you've got the model number on this, it is the Colink KLC500. Um, interesting, the power socket sits proud of the actual chassis. Um, aesthetically, I don't know whether I like that. Um, it probably allows the chassis to be slightly smaller. Uh, it does look like they've tried to keep this as small as they can. So it, it's big enough to fit that 120 millimeter fan, but not much more than that. What I am going to do is I've got my power supply tester here and I'm going to plug a few things in and let's see what figures it gives us. Now, these aren't always the most reliable things in the world, but I thought it might be a good way to test it and see if it does get anywhere near what it's supposed to be given out. Okay, we're plugged in to the power supply tester. On the plus 5 volts rail, it's giving me exactly 5. On the plus 12 volt rail, it's giving me 12.3. Um, it's also giving me plus 12 volt V2, which is this one, the 8-pin um, motherboard connector. That's also 12.3. On the plus 3.3 volts, it's giving me exactly 3.3. On the minus 12 volts, it's giving me 11.5. I'm really not bothered about that at all. 5 volts standby, 5.1. So according to that, it's pretty much where it's supposed to be. Now, obviously, I'm not putting any load on it. But again, a cheap power supply can often fail to deliver, even when it's not being asked to do anything, the voltage that it is supposed to deliver. So on that basis, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, given the price that I paid for this, this was just £30, 30 UK pounds. For an 80 plus power supply, that's going to do a basic job. I think that's not a bad start. Obviously, I'd like to give it a go in a system and put it under a little bit of, of, uh, of, of pressure and see what it's like. But on the basis of what we've seen today, I'm quite happy with it. And I would certainly say it's probably worth a go. Now... I may well post a video in a few months' time after we've had use of this. Certainly if I have any issues with it, I will do a follow-up. However, for now, Colink KCL C500 seems to be not a bad choice for the basic system builder. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please do like it and uh, leave a comment. And if you want to see more, then please subscribe. Thank you very much.